What's up everybody and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Emma. Today we are going to be talking about how I chose my sperm donor and how my fiance helped choose our sperm donor because it was definitely a team effort. Um, when we first started seeing our fertility doctor, he told us that there were four like sperm clinics, sperm banks that they accepted from. It was Fairfax, um, California Cryobank, Seattle Cryobank, um, and Zytex. So we'll kind of get into which ones was our favorite and why later on. Um, but the second thing they wanted us to do is he was gonna go ahead and draw my blood that very first appointment. Um, within that lab test, they were gonna find out if I'm CMV negative or CMV positive. Um, and just what that means, it's a virus that we've been either exposed to or not exposed to um, throughout our life. And if you're CMV negative, they want you to pick a donor that's CMV negative. If you're CMV positive, they want you to pick a donor that's either CMV positive or CMV negative. So you really get a benefit if you are CMV positive. Um, I unfortunately came back as CMV negative, so that meant our donor had to be CMV negative, um, which ended up being okay because we found our perfect match, um, but it did make it a little bit harder because it kind of cut the prospects in half. Uh, we didn't have as many to choose from. Uh, but once we found out that we were CMV negative, we felt that it was safe to go ahead and start making accounts on those four websites I mentioned earlier. Um, and I think two or three of them had like 90 day all access for only $150. So it ended up working out really well because we only had to pay for that 90 day window because we ended up finding him within that 90 day window. Um, but once we made those accounts, we started kind of getting on and getting familiar with the websites, what we liked, what we didn't like. At first, I didn't think that um, not having adult photos was gonna bother me at all. Um, but then the profiles with the adult photos, the baby was really cute and sometimes the adult didn't end up looking like what we expected them to look like. So we ended up deciding pretty early on that it was important to both of us that they had adult and baby photos. Um, Cause our overall main goal was to match our sperm donor as close to my fiance as possible. She has very long brown, dark hair, blue eyes, dark features on her face. Um, so she's tall, 5'10", 5'11". Um, so really wanting to match him to her as closely as we could while we knew some things were negotiable. Um, just having those adult photos really helped us with that. Um, so we found out, yeah, early on that we wanted adult photos along with our baby photos. Um, another thing we kind of towed the wire on was genetics. So they show you the donor's genetics, um, like what their recessive traits came back as. Um, and some, most of the time I think they want you to wait until you have your genetic results to start looking at sperm donors because if you both have that recessive trait, you have to go through genetic counseling um, and decide if that's still the sperm donor you wanna proceed with. Uh, we did not wait. Um, when we found ours, we both decided like, he's it, that's what we want. Um, unfortunately, it was his like last donation and then he was retiring. Um, and he only had, I think like 12 vials left and we still had two weeks to go until my genetic results were gonna be back. Um, so I called the clinic that we were buying from and they said they do a 50% buyback. So we would buy his sperm, keep it in their storage until we needed it um, for the egg retrieval. And then if we didn't end up using it, like if my genetic results came back and there was too much and we weren't compatible, um, they would do a 50% buyback. So we wouldn't lose all of our money, we would just lose half of it. And we both decided that was definitely a risk that we were willing to take since everything kind of lined up with him. Um, so we spent about $2,000 <laughs> and stored. Two weeks later, I got my genetic results back and it was perfect. Neither one of us had the same recessive genes. He had three recessive genes. 
I had three or four recessive genes. Um, all were pretty mild, um, nothing to be concerned about. They didn't think that we needed to do any genetic um, counseling and we were good to go. So we have him, he's in storage. Um, and that's just really exciting to kind of have the that process off of our shoulders, but I digress. So eye color, um, we really wanted blue eyes. Our donor actually does not have blue eyes um, because we know sometimes it can be tricky with genetics and how, how all that plays out, getting blue eyes. Um, and since Kylie and I both have blue eyes, we would like children that have blue eyes, but we decided that wasn't super important to us. Um, our donor actually has brown eyes and he has some siblings and a dad with blue eyes so it's not completely out of the picture but it wasn't holding us back from picking him um what else his height his height wasn't super important um like i said earlier we were really just trying to match as close to my fiance as possible so like i said she's about 5'10 5'11 and really just kind of getting him in that height range but again we weren't like firm on those numbers. If he was a little bit shorter, a little bit taller, that was gonna be fine with us. Um, and he wasn't exactly Kylie's height. He was a little bit taller and that was fine. Um, so again, not something super important, just something we took into account. Um, his hair was definitely something we took into account because we wanted our children to kind of have my fiance's darker features and he did have dark features on his face. Um, a lot of dark brown hair so that was something that was semi-important maybe more important than height um, just again to look like my fiance since I will be the one carrying with my eggs um, what else was there oh they have a personality test on there um, and I guess that was like mild importance I think it was more important to me than it was Kylie my fiance. Um, I am very outgoing and she is more of an introvert. So we kind of wanted a donor that was in the middle and he actually ended up being perfect. He was like the extrovert version of my fiance, which was perfect. So I would say that was another thing that was a little bit more important to us than um, eye color and height. And then uh, they talk about education, so college education. Um, I mean, as long as he's doing something that he loves, I don't think college education was huge. They showed high school and college GPA and sports and stuff like that on all the websites. Um, I, With how much we ended up really liking him and how perfect everything was, I don't think if he hadn't gone to college that would have been a deal breaker. Um, but he did go to college and he has a pretty amazing career but again if he hadn't gone to further his education after high school i don't think that would have been a deal breaker for us at all so i would say that was not really that important um and then family health history this was probably the most important to us other than the CMV negative or positive aspect of things. He had to come from a semi-healthy family. Um, hi, Ren. Just because um, we don't want to predispose our kid or kids to anything, um, but his family health, health, health history, gosh, looked great. Um, just a few things here and there, um, but nothing crazy. And I guess it all just depends on what the health history is, because um, someone could look at my family health history and be like, absolutely not, no way, we do not want her eggs. Or they could do the same for my fiance's if we were in the position of donating eggs. Um, so I guess it's all just relative, but that's something we definitely um, paid a lot of attention to when we were picking our donor. Um, 
yeah and i think those are like the major things i think family health history and the cmv negative status were huge uh, hitters on our list and definitely things that we paid attention to um like i said eye color and height were kind of like eh not as important we looked at it and we definitely favored some donors that did have the blue eyes and the like 5'10 to 5'11 height but again we didn't end up picking a donor that was blue eyed or within that height range um hair color pretty much all of the donors we liked were brunette anyway so that was fine but that was important to us the hair color uh school and education not huge um in his essay that he wrote he sounded like he was very happy in his career and doing what he loved he did go to college but if he hadn't and was still happy i think that would have been perfectly fine with me and my fiance um but the websites so our favorite websites ended up being california cryobank and Fairfax. They had the most adult to baby photos um, and they just had more CMV negative options. Um, and you know, I know those change and they get new donors, they lose donors. So it may have just been like right then in the time period that we were looking that they just had more happened to have more CMV negative donors. So maybe that's why we were more drawn to those two websites. Um, we found that Seattle and Zytex uh, Seattle definitely does not do adult photos. Um, I asked if any of the profiles did and they said no to keep um, their identity pretty secretive, which is fine. Um, that is 1000% their option as a man that is donating. If they wanna go with a website that's gonna keep their identity much more on the wraps, that is perfectly fine. They're still doing something amazing by donating. Um, those are just sites that we kind of just started to stray away from we would look occasionally but we were really looking pretty religiously at california and fairfax um and i think with california and fairfax too we didn't have to pay for each tier it was just kind of involved in the all access and either seattle or zytex you had to pay for each tier to get like more information um, this is my guilty pleasure right now zero sugar zero caffeine I know it's still probably not the best for me and has a, probably a ton of junk in it but sometimes I need my soda fix um, I'm trying to think of anything else that we found super important um, we definitely got frustrated at times because there would be someone we liked and wanted to buy. We just couldn't get ourselves to do it for some reason. Um, and we'd kind of pull back and they would sell out of their donations. And then we'd be like, why, why didn't we do it? Um, but I talked to some other um, friends and even colleagues where I work that had gone through sperm donation and like picking a sperm donor. Um, and they said that they kind of just found the one and knew. And I think I was getting frustrated because we weren't like having that feeling with anybody. Um, and then randomly one night, uh, my fiance stayed up late looking. And the next morning she was like, hey, look at the sperm uh, donor that I um, favorited last night. Cause you can like favorite the ones you like on a favorites page and then you can like dislike the ones that you don't like so they can quit like clogging the feed uh, which was a nice feature <laughs> um so i went to our favorites page saw him like really really liked everything that we were seeing loved his baby photos loved his adult photos um and noticed that like i said it was his last donation and then he was retiring only had 12 left and we're like okay we'll just watch it um and as soon as things start dwindling down even lower you know we'll talk about if we do it before genetic results if we don't like you already know we ended up doing it super early um and not knowing if we were even going to be able to use his donation 
or not. Um, but it all worked out and we are ecstatic with our donor. He truly is perfect for us. I mean, the closer and closer we get to egg retrieval day, the more excited I get um, that he is our donor. Um, so as frustrating as the process got sometimes, it was also a really amazing bonding experience for my fiance and I just to really sit down together and go through our the person who's gonna help us create life. Um, because unfortunately we can't do it genetically. It's very frustrating, but um, he can help us and it was, I don't know, it was just an amazing experience. Uh, there were days where I couldn't even look because I was too frustrated, but we did it. We uh, picked our donor and his donation is just waiting on the egg retrieval. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hi, do you need me? Just like, get off the vlog, mom. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful if you're in your searching for a sperm donor um, journey. Um, I will definitely keep vlogging and there will be a new video every week. But I will see you in the next one.